and to see how the church has been progressive in taking up the banner for those who have not been able to carry the banner for themselves, uh, its involvement in uh, helping those who have been historically oppressed and denied. That stands out greatly to see how far the church has come, even though I know how far the church needs to go, to see that it hasn't sat idly by. I also have been impressed how each year God has called through the United Methodist Church and equipped men and women who are responding to God's call on their life. And to see how God continues to supply this United Methodist Church with men and women of young age who seem to be more gifted each year. And, and that stands out to see the quality of the men and women who are going into ministry or being called into ministry. The two things that I, I think I've kind of gathered my thoughts around, one is an old hymn title out of the Cokesbury Hymnal. It said, Love, Love, Mercy, and Grace. is an old hymn, old gospel hymn in the Cokesbury Hymnal. And I think that the Methodist people in general and in specifically as well as individually are basically people of love, mercy, and grace. When we act in those ways, we're at our best. The second thing I would say is when there's a, a, a partnership between uh, the Episcopal leadership, the clergy, and the laity in, in a local congregation, that a lot of fruit is usually born for the kingdom of God. Well, I would have to refer to an experience. Um, I was uh, at, the, at the church and um, I was called by my finance chairman to have lunch, to have lunch across the street at her house. So Kitty and I, my wife and I, went to her home and we had lunch with her husband and her nine-year-old daughter. And we had lunch and as I was uh, finishing up, I had to leave early because I had a wedding at the church. And the nine-year-old girl came up to me and said, Wally, when I get married, will you perform my ceremony? And I nodded yes, and 20 years later she called me. And she said, Wally, will you perform my ceremony? And it is amazing the amount of influence that we can have on people. And it's amazing the amount of impact that pastors can have on people. pick up a fishing rod and fish for people uh, outside the walls of the church. In the 80s and 90s, you could put out a sign that said Methodist Church and Methodists would come from all around. They're still out there. They're still out there. But we need to pick up a fishing rod and go fish where they are and bring them inside the walls of the church. And so that is the, the ministry that we can have through service uh, to share with, with other individuals to come outside the walls, inside the wall, to inside the walls of the church. I would continue to evaluate uh, whether or not we're being relevant. I would continue to evaluate if we are locked into a model. If we're trying to do things in 2021, like we did 40 years ago or even just 10 years ago. And I think as we look at our relevancy, or we're going to understand that we need to do things differently, more effectively, and uh, altogether things that have not been done before. So I, I think uh, to evaluate our relevancy would be very, very important for clergy and laity. And I don't think we do that enough. But I would say the same thing that have been true in the past are still true today. And that is you have to reach out and then you have to hold on to both the people in your community and the people in your congregations and to your brothers and sisters in the annual conference. By reaching out and holding on, I mean, you can't just sit back and wait for people to come in the church. Any ministry that reaches out will touch some people in your community and in your congregation. You have to exercise that gift of pastoral care, even for people who aren't part of your congregation, and, and we just need to strive to do that.
Keep the scripture central in all that you do. Influence culture more than culture influences you. And that's true in your congregations as well, regardless of what the world will try to tell you. Uh, I think that's of most importance. But I think maybe the thing I want to say specifically is just keep pressing on. Just like Paul said in Philippians 4, 13, uh, God will make a way. Everything is possible with God. All those kind of scriptures that come through there. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, but you have to press on. Don't give up encouraging your people. Keep on loving them. Keep Love all of them. The ones that are easy to love and the ones that are difficult to love. Uh, love your brothers and sisters in Christ, those who agree with you theologically and those who don't. And most of all, remember to be loving, merciful, and graceful in all your relationships. Run. <laughs> run and share the love of God with them. Uh, run and share the love of God with them through word and deed. And let them know, let the congregation know and your, all your constituents know that they are loved by God. That is so elemental, but it is the basic and most important thing. People need to hear that and feel that again and again and again, that they are loved by God. I would say fall in love with God, be a lover of God. And in all of one's ministry, we spend so much time doing, I would spend as much time being. And I think the, one, the more one gets connected to God, the more one is devoted to God, the more one commits him or herself to a devout life, the more one is going to hear from God for things that need to be done in one's personal life and for things that need to be done in one's ministry. And more than that, one is going to be equipped by the Spirit of God, but just to love God with nothing else in mind, with no aspirations, no goal, is pleasing to God.